Hi guys, welcome to Cumbrian Lad Outdoors and welcome to today's video. Today we are heading up Nethermost Pike, which is the second highest peak in the Helvellyn range. Off the top of my head, I think it's somewhere around about 860 metres. I'll pop it up on screen here, the exact height. We've just parked up at Withburn Car Park, which is a United Utilities car park. We've walked out the back of the car park and up this steep little path where already, just above Thirlmere, we've got some lovely peaks popping into view. For the change, we've got some decent weather at the moment, it's nice and calm. Although there is some clouds in the sky, when the sun pokes out, it's lovely and warm. 20 Celsius when I park the car up, and according to the Met Office, it is supposed to clear up with some nice sunshine later on. So it's a perfect day for a bit of wild camping. As you all know, I'm going to be doing Hadrian's Wall later on this year. We've actually set a date myself and camping down at 85. Are going to be starting Hadrian's Wall on the 3rd of August. I'm deep in training. I've gone from 15 stone 5 and a half to 13 stone 12. So the pounds are coming off. They are not also just coming off me. They're also coming off my ultralight weight backpack. Last time I was out with this backpack, I was five and a half kilograms. I've since made a couple of alterations and the base weight for today's rucksack is a measly 4.5 kilos. Now that includes food, but not water. Today I have got two litres of water this side and I've got one litre of vodka and coke on the other side that makes seven and a half kilos and I've got half a litre of water strapped to my front for drinking on the way up so the whole rucksack is eight kilos and I'm really happy with that I can feel the difference between this and my normal rucksack hugely it's making a big difference for me so come join me on this wild camp to see what kit i'm using to get the base weight down to 4.5 kilos and as always i'll bring you back along the way to show you the beautiful views of the lake district as they open up let's go the first part of this walk is through a wooded area and boy am i glad to get out of there the midges absolutely savage and the path continues to be very steep and we're zigzagging up there somewhere but as you can see we've ascended quite a good height in a very short space of time and we've now got Thirlmere a clearing view and right on cue the sun's come out from behind a cloud and I can feel the heat in that already. I've given myself plenty of time for this one, with it being a warm day, quite a high hike, although not too far, about 2.2 miles, something like that. I'm not in any rush today. I'm just gonna take it nice and slow, give myself plenty of time, and then I'm not gonna to be too blown out by the time I get to the top and I can just sit down and chill. We we'll just buy a lovely bubbling waterfall here. I might just go and wash my face in that little pool there. And as you can see, we're gaining height very quickly and the views really are starting to open up. The path zigzags nicely. So it's not a constant steep walk up. You're getting like a little break. I'm gonna go and wash my face, take on some water and crack on. Now that sun's out, I really am starting to sweat and the quick ascent in height continues. We've got quite a lot of mountain ranges in view now. We're looking down on High Dam Tarn and the mountain ranges in the background and we're well above Thirlmere now. You can see the path that I've been following and that is going up here and round. You can see we've got some paragliders up in the sky as well. So far this is a very enjoyable walk. 
despite it being steep, like I say, it keeps zigzagging, so it's not too bad. I'm really enjoying this one so far. Oh, we are starting to get there now. The sun's gone away, but I'm still sweating, and the legs are starting to fade a little bit. Not too bad. Just gonna follow this path here, it dips down a little bit. And I believe that is the summit of Nethermost Pike. And we can just and so see the summit of Helvellyn there. Doom water is now in view. We've just got a little bit of Thirlmere. Well, well, well above High Dam Tarn now. And we can see Windermere and just and so the tail end of Coniston and even the sea towards Blackpool. Oh. We've got some more paragliders still up in the sky and it is a beautiful day. I'm going to take some more water on and then we're going to beast that top and tap the summit cairn. Well, I was in fact incorrect without uh, checking the Garmin Phoenix Pro 7, which has been keeping me on track once again, absolutely perfect. I was assuming that that was nethermost pike. That's the path that I've been following and we're actually swinging a right up here. And looking at the map, we're not too far away at all. It shouldn't be too long before we are tapping that summit. And here we are. That is not a bad walk at all. That has surprised me. Even though it's a couple of hundred metres higher than Whiteless Pike, that is a much easier walk than we had that day. But without further ado, Here we are, summit cairn of Nethermost Pike, and we can see Nethermost Pike done and boshed. Yet another one off the list. Really starting to get through them this year. We really are. And we have got 360 views. Just the way I like it. Wow, and there's acres of room to pitch tents up here. Loads of room. We can see over to Ull's Water. We've got a cracking view of Striding Edge up to Catsty Cam. We can just see people going up and down the chimney there and on the final ascent to Helvellyn. Beautiful views all around us. Look at this. Absolutely stunning. There is another little summit just over there which I believe may or may not be Dolly Wagon Pike so what I'm going to do is I'm going to consult the map and if that is Dolly Wagon Pike or anything of any significance we're going to go and tap that bad boy as well I've just had a wander over from where I was to this little uh, cairn here and that isn't Dolly Wagon Pike However, Dolly Wagon Pike isn't that much further. 20 past two, I've got plenty of time to go and tag it. We've got a great view down towards Patterdale. And just down there is the route I took down when I was doing day three with Adam of the Coast to Coast, Adam and Dan. So that brings back some nice memories. But yeah, let's go and tap Dolly Wagon Pike, why not? Brucey bonus day once again. Oh, it's double win right there, another most pike. And Dolly Wagon Pike, you what? Number two of the day. Dolly Wagon Pike, done and boshed. Woo wee! <clears throat> wow. Another fantastic view, striding edge. Down towards Ullswater, Hallin Fell, St. Sunday Crag, and all the rest. 360 views, love it. I 
I was umming and ahhing about changing my plans and camping here on Dolly Wagon Pike and there is space however that means I've got a longer walk back to the car in the morning and it is a little bit more breezy here as well so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to head back to Nethermost Pike and get this rucksack off sit my backside down and chill out I think so I'll bring you back once I'm back at Nethermost Pike and that's me back at Nethermost Pike it is still a little bit breezy here but definitely not as bad as Dolly Wagon Pike so I've definitely made the right decision to return here it's time to get the rucksack off I've got a few snacks I've got some nuts and some dried fruit which I'm gonna eat now uh, the stomach's fairly pulling after that little extra walk over at Dolly Wagon and I'm just gonna chill out for a bit like I say there's acres of pitches up here just look at it camping perfection a little bit rocky but I think I've got a lovely soft flat spot just here which should give me a little bit of respite from the wind I should get a cracking sunrise in the morning with a bit of luck unfortunately the weather isn't as forecast by now I was expecting fully clear skies and it doesn't look like it's going to clear and give us some decent sunshine but as long as it doesn't rain I'm not too bothered right rucksack off and chill out time well I've been sat around for a few hours now and as you can hear the weather conditions haven't improved we're still quite overcast which was not forecast we should be basking in sunshine according to the Met Office but the winds are bang on we've got gusts around about the 20 to 25 mile an hour we've got the last few stragglers coming over striding edge and on top of hell a few people here on top but the views are absolutely fantastic unbelievable as you can see we're all set up once again we're in the OEX Fox One Plus Ultralight I've got my cheap sit mat just tucked under to Summit Etherlite XT Extreme and the Aeros Premium Pillow also by Sea to Summit and the Sea to Summit Spark 2 sleeping bag. Where's Tactical Duck? Where's Tactical Duck? Can't find Tactical Duck. I've got the Atom Packs EP40 Plus rucksack just tucked at the top of the tent there. My Flex Tail Gear Tiny Pump X V2 for pumping up my sleeping pad and my pillar, and also that will be my light for the night. I've got my bug spray and my bug net. Obviously, won't need that tonight with the wind, and my bag of electricals, my power bank, and cords and got my glasses in there and so on and so forth what have I changed to get from 5.5 kilos base weight to 4.5 kilos well I have swapped out my pee bottle for a hydro pack collapsible obviously that is a little bit of a luxury I could completely get rid of that but not having to get out of your tent for a pee in the middle of the night is an absolute godsend that is for sure and the Aeros premium pillow is a lot less size and a lot less weight than my cheap pillow so that's saved both weight and space in my rucksack I've swapped out the jet boil for this titanium cup which I bought off of Amazon Tibrumatiak or whatever it's called 450ml and inside there I've got my jet lighter and the MSR Pocket Rocket 2 I've also gone 
full dried food. Standard for me, real termite pulled pork. And I've got raspberry toasted muesli with milk for morning. Which will no doubt definitely not be as good as the all day breakfast from Wayfarers, but it's uh, all that saved me a full kilo in pack weight. So yeah, 4.5 kilos base weight plus two litres of water is 6.5 kilos plus a litre and a half of vodka and coke. Very dilute mix, which gives a total weight of there or thereabouts, eight kilos, all in pack weight. And let's not forget tactical duck. At the moment, tactical duck has gone missing. No doubt somewhere in my seat of Summit Spark 2 sleeping bag. Cos he absolutely loves it. Almost as much as me. If you know, you know. As you can see, inside that 4.5 kilo rucksack, there's most definitely a few luxuries. And it's a setup that's working really well for me too. I'm really chuffed with it. So for now, I'm going to go and chill out a little bit more. Um, and it won't be long before it's food time, so I'll bring you back then. Well, it's food time, but I am a little bit concerned about tactical duck. I don't know where he's at. 100% he's in my tent somewhere. But the little sucker's tucked up somewhere. But nevertheless, it's time to eat. My all-time favourite. And I am ready for this. The Pocket Rocket 2 boiled up the water in the little titanium cup double quick time. Much faster than the jet boil. The jet boil's not done. That is very convenient. But for these ultra lightweight camps, this little setup works really well. Mm. <laughs> and once again I've got a cracking view out the tent to enjoy my food too mm. <laughs> there's another couple of guys pitching up a tent halfway between me and the summit of Helvellyn and there's the last few stragglers walking as well Mmm, so ready for this. So as always, I'm going to get myself away and enjoy my food. There's not going to be much chance for filming between now and going to bed. So the camera's going down, but I will bring you back before I go to sleep. Well, as you can hear, the wind hasn't let up one bit, but the sun has come out to play. Look at this. Absolutely. Stunning. I have got the drone with me, but there's absolutely no point in sending it up in this. It just won't handle it. There is a possibility that I might get a sunset time lapse and maybe even a sunrise time lapse. So that being said, there isn't going to be much more chance for filming tonight. So I'm going to switch the camera off and once again enjoy some more chill time. So enjoy what footage I've got for you overnight and we'll see you in the morning.
morning, everyone. To be fair, I've had a really good night's sleep. Um, about six hours, solid. Didn't wake up once, which is good. As you can probably hear, we are still getting battered by wind. The little Fox 1 ultralight has withstood, I'm guessing, 30, 35 mile an hour gusts, no problem. However, we have had some unforecast rain. The Met Office <laughs> has got it so wrong. Apparently, yesterday we were supposed to get blazing sun from about two o'clock. The winds were forecast, but yeah, we didn't get the sun. It's been overcast all evening yesterday and this morning we've got fog and rain <sighs> it is what it is it's been a very enjoyable camp i love that walk up that walk up was fantastic and a great pitch as well nice and flat which really which really helps the sleep i'm really happy with the changes to my rucksack to get the weight down to 4.5 kilos base weight makes all the difference it really does but it's now currently quarter past four in the morning damn my body clock as always man as always i am going to get my breakfast really quickly um, i'm not going to bother filming that i need to get home Get myself packed up, get down that mountain. But I will bring you back one more time before we head back to the car. Well, that is me all packed up and ready to go home. And conditions this morning are nothing short of horrific. Come to the Lake District, they say. <laughs> Come and see the views. Wow. Yeah, conditions are so bad this morning. I'm actually gonna put the Garmin Phoenix 7 Pro Solar on reverse route, just to make sure that I follow the correct path down to the car. That's my rucksack, just about ready to go. As you can see, the bin bags attached to it. So as always, and as it should be, I believe in no trace. I haven't had a morning with worse visibility than this ever, I don't think. <laughs> Met office. Yeah, you got it wrong, man. <laughs> you got it wrong. Wow. So I'm going to get the rucksack on and I'm going to head back down to the car and I'll bring you back in the car to sign the video off properly and that's me back at the car about an hour and 15 minutes down and i think it took me about an hour and a half an hour and 40 minutes to get up a thoroughly enjoyable walk in camp shame about the weather this morning but all's good we've got a wild camping thank you guys very much for clicking on the video i hope you've enjoyed it as much as i have so once again until next time stay safe much love from a Cumbrian lad. <laughs>